Ten years ago, Neil Gaiman told a reader on his blog that George R. Martin was not, in fact, his bitch. The tea's not hot, it had ten years to cool down, talk about being late to a party, but we're gonna talk about that today. Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, my name is Kat and I write children's fiction. Today I want to discuss the question if authors owe their readers and if they do, what do they owe them? Before we get into a general discussion, I just wanted to specifically discuss the whole situation with Neil Gaiman, defending George R. R. Martin and because the whole thing is way too long, I'm gonna look at my notes. So, here's the basic situation. Tis the year 2009, when blogs are still a thing. George R. R. Martin's last book in his series A Song of Ice and Fire has been published in 2005. No episodes of the TV show Game of Thrones have been made yet, but there are a few announcements going around and filming will commence soon. We don't know if these announcements triggered the following tragic event. Neil Gaiman receives a fan letter, which I will now read to you in an abridged version. I will also link the full version down below. Hi Neil! I've recently subscribed to George R. R. Martin's blog in the hopes of getting some inside information regarding when the next Song of Ice and Fire book is due to be released. I love the series, but since subscribing to the blog, I've become increasingly frustrated with Martin's lack of communication on the next novel's publication date. In fact, it's almost as though he's doing everything in his power to avoid working on his latest novel. The fan then goes on to ask Neil Gaiman two questions. The second one being, when writing a series of books like Martin is with A Song of Ice and Fire, what responsibility does he have to finish the story? Is it unrealistic to think that by not writing the next chapter, Martin is letting me down, even though if and when the book gets written is completely up to him? Would be very interested in your insight. Cheers, Gareth. I think that's an excellent question, Gareth. But before we get to my opinion, let's hear what Neil Gaiman had to say. So here's an abridged version of what Neil Gaiman answered. Yes, it's unrealistic of you to think George is letting you down. Look, this may not be palatable, Gareth, and I keep trying to come up with a better way to put it, but the simplicity of things, at least from my perspective, is this. George R. R. Martin is not your bitch. This is a useful thing to know, perhaps a useful thing to point out when you find yourself thinking that possibly George is indeed your bitch and should be out there typing what you want to read right now. People are not machines. Writers and artists aren't machines. You're complaining about George doing other things than writing the books you want to read, as if your buying the first book in the series was a contract with him. That you would pay over your $10 and George for his part would spend every waking hour until the series was done writing the rest of the books for you. No such contract existed. You were paying your $10 for the book you were reading and I assume that you enjoyed it because you want to know what happens next. I'm going to paraphrase now and again I link the original but basically Neil then goes on to say that most people unrealistically expect authors to produce quality work fast and that he for that reason is glad that he's not writing a series. He also talks about his struggles uh, when he was younger and writing the Sandman series and that authors basically are people and have a life and uh, you might not always know what's going on with them personally. He says that authors also have different working styles and might run out of steam and that they might simply not be inspired to write what you, the reader, are currently waiting for. And he also says that um, authors simply do the best they can each time and that they try to do what they can to increase the likelihood that good art will be created. Finally, his advice is this and now I'm going to quote again. Wait, read the original book again. Read something else. 
get on with your life. Hope that the author is writing the book you want to read and not dying or something equally as dramatic. And in the future, when you see other people complaining that George R. R. Martin has been spotted doing something other than writing the book they are waiting for, explain to them, more politely than I did the first time, the simple and unanswerable truth. George R. R. Martin is not working for you. Hope that helps. Okay, so before we get to my personal opinion, let's hear what other famous authors thought about the topic and also what I think George R. R. Martin actually thinks about the topic because his thoughts here are kind of important. So let's get into it. Neil Gaiman is obviously of the camp of authors who think that um, writers don't owe their readers. And now let's look at kind of the other camp. Part of this camp is Agatha Christie, who very much thought that she owed her readers. How do we know this? Because it pains me so much to say it because I love her books and I love this character, but she hated one of her two most famous characters, who is Hercule Poirot, the famous Belgian detective. She didn't like this character, but she continued to create books that feature him. Why? Because she thought that this is what the public wanted um, and she thought that it was her duty as a writer and thereby entertainer, because that's how she saw herself, to give the public what they want. Funnily enough, George R. R. Martin actually seems to fall in Agatha Christie's camp and he seems to believe that he in fact does owe his readers. So he has totally understandably lost his temper when people kept just bugging him and also telling him that they were afraid that uh, he was gonna die before he finishes the book series, which is just a horrible thing to say to a person. So apart from these few understandable, impatient responses, he actually went on an interview with Entertainment Weekly and expressed that he does know that fans are completely frustrated waiting for the next part of the series and that he's frustrated himself. And again I quote, and again I will link the interview down below, I know there are a lot of people out there who are very angry with me that The Winds of Winter isn't finished. And I'm mad about that myself. I wished I finished it four years ago. I wished it was finished now, but it's not. And I've had dark nights of the soul where I've pounded my head against the keyboard and said, God, will I ever finish this? The show is going further and further forward and I'm falling further and further behind. What the hell is happening here? I've got to do this. So here is finally what I think. I think there are three main things to be discussed. One is that the situation that George R. R. Martin is in, which is having fans waiting for the next installment of a series and begging him to write his next book, is a um, situation and a position of privilege. I mean, yes, he definitely worked for that privilege. He worked hard for it, I'm sure. But it still is kind of the dream of pretty much every author. We want people to be so excited about our next book that they're begging us to write it. So I think people who are in that position just need to acknowledge that they are in a position of privilege. It's just not a very good look otherwise. Point number two are reader expectations. So yeah, I do think that um, authors owe their readers in a certain way and the magic word here is reader expectations. Because people don't read or write in a vacuum we've come to associate certain things with genres or keywords. What's interesting here is that George R. R. Martin didn't write a standalone novel. If he had done that, I don't think he would owe readers the next book at all. 
but that's not what he did. He wrote a series. And a series almost in the most extreme sense of it. Meaning he doesn't even have a close storyline in each book. So yeah, I do think he kind of owes readers uh, a next installment in his series because we did go in as readers with the expectation that yes, this is the first book in a series. So eventually this series will be wrapped up and this storyline will be resolved. To me, the Neil Gaiman stance of kind of oh, you bought the first book and now you should be happy with it is kind of like selling someone a book where half the pages are blank. Because that person bought the book and in George R. R. Martin's case bought the first book in the series with the expectation of having a finished story at some point. Another part uh, to the whole reader expectation thing is, for example, to respect genre expectations. Let's say you write a romance, so everybody who buys that book will expect a happy ending from you because that's just a genre expectation and a genre requirement. And if you have a kid's book that has a unicorn on the cover, the story better be about some unicorns. So yes, I definitely do think that writers owe their readers to some extent. And in George R. R. Martin's case, of course, it's a bit tricky because there's a lot of work involved. But I do think that he owes his readers to try his best. To try his best to finish the story that he promised us when he published that first book. And of course he doesn't owe us this amount of books in X amount of time. He doesn't even owe us quality work because what does that even mean? Everybody has different expectations of quality work. But he does owe us trying to keep his side of the bargain because I think a bargain was made. He promised a series, we expect a series, he should deliver a series. And this brings me to my third and last point of the discussion, which is... It's not what you say, it's how you say it. As you probably understood by now, this video is not in the least meant to attack George R. R. Martin or to justify angry readers telling him he shouldn't eat himself to death before he finishes the book series because again, that's horrible and don't ever say that to anyone. So I totally understand that writing a book is hard. George R. R. Martin's word counts are insanely high. Um, he has many storylines that he has to wrap up. Uh, with the show there's added pressure, so I do feel sorry for him and I do actually think that he is trying his best, you know, he gives readers sample chapters, he of course doesn't tweet all the time, hey just letting you know, uh, <laughs> still didn't finish that book, because that wouldn't be helpful at all. So this video is not really about George R. R. Martin. It's more about Mia Gaiman and that I got kind of frustrated that he answered pretty rudely to a question that was nicely asked. The reader Gareth was very respectful and what he got in response was kind of mean. So yeah, um, I'm a bit sad to be honest that Neil Gaiman reacted this way because you know, I do have a lot of his work, I love the Sandman series, love his kids books especially, I like the world building and the vibe that his books have. So yeah, I was just kind of sad, um, maybe there was some built up frustration there from the stress that he experienced trying, or not trying, uh, successfully writing the Sandman series, which is very good by the way. I'm not trying to come after Neil Gaiman here because this happened 10 years ago and also he's very famous and probably really doesn't care what I think about him. I was just a bit sad how the whole situation was handled and I guess I'm just trying to call for more tolerance from all sides. Writers, 
Please understand that you're in a position of privilege if fans are bugging you for your next book. I really hope that I can get to this point one day and just be honest with them. Tell them when you're struggling. Tell them, guys, I'm very sorry this is happening. I'm frustrated about it too. Writing a book is hard and sometimes it takes longer than planned. And also, readers, just know that writing a book takes a long time. So be patient with your favorite authors. Okay, so those were my thoughts. Uh, this video is probably gonna be very long, so thank you so, so much if you watched till the end of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think that writers owe their readers? And if so, what do they owe them? Thank you so, so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you want to see new book related and writing related videos from me every Tuesday, also come to hang out with me on all of my other social media. I am at Cat Sperling Books pretty much everywhere, except for Twitter, where I am at K Sperling Books. I will link everything down below. Again, thank you so, so much for watching today and have a great day. And also, I'm so excited for Game of Thrones, guys! Yeah!